And what exciting plans or new directions do you have in mind for the next 100 episodes? So as I said, our new initiative of having the podcast up on your home TV, being a channel partner there and growing that channel, not only growing the reach of that channel because it is a global network. We've done pretty well for the first five episodes that are up there. And we have another batch that will be released soon. At some point, we will get to the point where when podcasts get released on YouTube and on Apple, on Spotify, and all the podcast platforms, it will also be in sync with when the episode goes up, goes up on your home TV, but we're in the ramp up stage right now. But because of that, as I spoke about, it's been very exciting for us to just be able to be more creative, think like producers, think about different ideas of how to capture stories. Hey everybody, welcome to Finding the Upside. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today we have a special episode for you. We are celebrating our 100th podcast episode. Woohoo! And I have Liana here with me who is the pivotal team member who is the center of this podcast. And she's joining me today for us to kind of break down our journey and talk about what it feels like to get to the 100th episode. Hey, Liana. Hi, Maria. I'm excited to be here and happy 100 episodes. <laughs> I know. This is big, right? How does it feel from your perspective? I mean, let me just say, I'm ecstatic that we've gotten to this point. I know we have a lot to talk about that we're going to break down for all of you, but just opening comments. How does it feel to be at this point for you? I think it's crazy and exciting and just so hopeful for the future. We've learned so much in these last 100 episodes and I'm excited to find out what we'll learn in the next 100 episodes. I think this is a huge like moment for us. That's something that should be applauded and congratulated. So um, yeah, agreed. And you know, I also want to just give you the spotlight for a moment. Liana is the glue that keeps this going and brings this every week. She has not only, she does the work to do it. She has not only done that and does that week by week, but also has figured out a lot of stuff that we didn't know how to do and is the major reason why we've even been able to bring it to you every single week consistently for two years, a hundred episodes. We're in our fourth season. I mean, it's just incredible. So thank you, Liana, for all of your efforts, dedication and persistence, <laughs> because we're going to break down some of that, you know, learning as you go is an exciting, exhilarating thing, but it also can be very frustrating. And I think as, as we've discussed before, we really try, both of us try to keep ourselves focused on moving forward yeah. regardless. Um, and that's kind of what this podcast overall umbrella topic is about is right. Facing the challenges or the obstacles as challenges and opportunities to learn more, discover more and just figure it out and not let it stop us. So yeah, thank you for all you've done. And I, I agree that celebration is so important. And I think that we don't often do that in our daily lives, just generally speaking, you know, we're so quick to finish one thing, move on to the next. Yeah. And there's so many people talking about this right now, but I have a hard time taking this in because I've been kind of trained to, to do that and programmed and fell into the programming of just, Hey, what's next? What's next? Yeah. It really is so important to pause, take a moment and celebrate the journey, the progress. And that is really what I think will help us move forward into this next hundred episodes. So yeah, I agree. <laughs> very excited for yes, that. Me too. All right. So we wanted to take a moment and just kind of, in addition to celebrating, just kind of break down the journey and share this for all of you and give you a little bit of behind the scenes. We also have some questions that we asked some of our loyal listeners of what they wanted to know and what questions they had in this hundredth episode celebration. 
So let's get into it. So first off, let's talk about, we've had in these hundred episodes, first of all, it's been a journey, right? And so let's kind of talk about that a little bit. You know, we first started and you tell me from your perspective, because I'm going to kind of break this down from what, what we talked about two years ago, and it was exactly two years ago yeah, where we launched. And that summer, you know, we were all in the office full time, right? And I think I said, we have to launch the podcast this summer, by the end of the summer, right? We kind of put a stake in the ground. And let me just say that Liana was also part of the inception of this because when she was back, when she started working with us as an intern, her and another intern, Emma, both collaborated and said, you should do a podcast. And I think I've told that story before. And I'm like, huh, really? And I kicked the can down the road for two years. And that's when we kind of put the stake in the ground. I was like, we have to do it this summer. By the end of the summer, we have to launch, right? Yep. Is that your recollection? Yeah, that's the same thing. And so we did that. And I'm going to ask you to share in a moment, but I felt like whatever it, whatever we needed to do to figure out how to do it, we were going to do it. And that was my intention. Yeah. And I want to know from you, looking back, how that all felt. I think when we started, I mean, as you just said, as interns, we knew it's everything that you were doing and running in your company. And we just realized like, that's so, this could be such a great podcast. Like everything she wants to do, this is like such a huge opportunity for her. So looking back at that now, and you know, I was still onboarded with you after being an intern and just hearing the back and forth debate of we should do it, we shouldn't. I'm like, I think we should, like, I think we really should. And then seeing that final like state in the ground, like it's happening, we're running. I think it was like, just so like, exciting to hear because it was something that we were looking forward to since I first started and that's yeah and it was also like a project that like we had just recommended and you know we didn't know if you would run with it but we were like okay like we're just 17 18 like recommending something so seeing that it actually was something that you implemented later on and that we actually now we're 100 episodes later is something that like 17 year old me is like oh my God, you like did it. Like a little project that you do. <laughs> like it's yeah, really. now a little project turned big. So yeah. um, that was, it's, it was exciting then at 17 and it's exciting now here four years later. Yeah. I mean, and I, I, I it's, it's interesting to hear that perspective because, you know, I could assume that, but it's good yeah. to hear that from you. And I, and I also have another follow-up question for you is, did you anticipate 17 year old you when you and Emma suggested it did you anticipate how much work and how much planning and requirement and steps and you know that it that it involved did that surprise you and in what way so I knew it would be a lot of work I feel like I always knew that but Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how many like minuscule little details that are surrounded with evolving a podcast creating a podcast now I feel like we've learned it in such a way that we can be like if we were to start some a new podcast or help someone start a podcast we're like okay we know how to do it off the bat like Mm -hmm. we this is what you'll set up with this is what you'll do this is how you'll record this is where you'll produce like we can give you the whole rundown in like less than five minutes yeah yeah but telling me that at 17 that we have to like do all of this in order to produce a podcast i i definitely did not anticipate for that yeah the the, the minutia for sure and it's yes. like the details all the little things yep and and honestly i also had really no knowledge of how to do it but i had a little more perspective just because of my experience of taking on other projects that i yep. knew there was, pro- especially since they didn't know how to do it, we didn't know how to do it. There was probably going to be lots of things that we didn't anticipate because, you know, or we weren't thinking about because we didn't know. Yeah. But I would say for me, and you tell me if you feel the same, that's part of the excitement for me. Yeah. And I think 
you know, we've done lots of new things, right? Like is we're going to figure it out. Like we're just going to figure it out. Yeah. For so long that stopped me from doing new things. And I continue to embrace that perspective because, and I think I just did an episode on this, right? Yep. Just not knowing how to do stuff and not letting that stop you figuring out as you go or grow as you go, so to speak. And we've really approached everything like that. So, you know, I, I, that, that's exciting to me. And yeah. I think it's also keeping your mindset right where you're like, okay, there's going to be lots of things that we didn't anticipate. We just got to attack them as they come up. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, our, our stake in the ground two years ago was, you know, where I was like, okay, we're doing this. We purposely, and this was my intention to start out slow and we started with an audio only podcast. Yep. Um, so we didn't have video. It was the easiest, most accessible entry point for us after we researched it. Yep. And the intention always was to master that, figure out how to get this produced and, you know, recorded, produced and going and distributing distributed distributed and then evolved to video and uh we did do that we evolved to video um solo episodes that i recorded here in the office and then we really wanted to add the element of having guests and we tried to set up two years ago like i think it was like in the first three months of us doing the podcast we tried to set up equipment to do it where we would do it in-house and have guests. And I remember so much frustration because we didn't know and you were researching and we were buying microphones and we were trying to figure out somebody else had given us some advice of how they do it, but they were not video. They were only audio, but guest. And so we bought some equipment that helped with the dual audio feed or whatever that's called. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, oh my gosh, to do video is going to be crazy. So yeah, we're right outside of New York. I mean, there's got to be places set up for this. And that's when we found the studio that we started at. We started recording at the studio with guests, which was awesome. Yeah. And Bravery Studios was a great spot for us. It helped us transition into that, that format. And having guests was really exciting. And we could do guests there live. Yeah, And yeah. he also helped to, you know, being in the studio, all I had to do was show up, sit down and somebody else worried about all the details. Yeah. And that was great. And even if it was a virtual guest, we do it on Riverside and that's what we're doing right now, but we didn't have to worry about all the tech. And that was, yeah. I think, important as well, because as we said, there were so many details of doing each piece. Yep. To take that all on, on our own right out of the gate would have been really difficult. Yep. So we did that for quite some time. And then we discussed it internally, not, not only in Liana, but everybody else on the team, I think last summer or like after last summer, maybe we had the year anniversary, which we celebrated. We had a big party. You probably uh, saw some of the posts that we shared on that to celebrate the one year anniversary. And then after that, we started looking at how could we set up our own studio in house. And that is currently where we are now. We're not in it right now. I'm not in it right now, but it's down the hall and we are set up. We've recorded po podcast episodes there, but it's in its evolution of, you know, designing it, getting it evolved to have better sound and a little more of a, a set yeah. to, to have it set up as a set. And uh, that'll be the next the next phase that we we conquer. Yeah. But um, you know, I, I again just your perspective, like you've been kind of all in on that. And uh, where do you think? Where do you think we are? We are we headed in the right direction with regard to that? I think a hundred percent we are headed in the right direction. I mean, something we've learned over these past two years is we are gonna have setbacks when it comes to this like next step. But I think everything we've learned so far has helped us and like guided us. So now I know, like now I have this like knowing feeling that moving forward, anything, all those setbacks that we're having, we'll, we know we'll get over and we know yeah. how to fix it. 
and we know working together we'll just be able to conquer it and then I, I do believe that with our studio this is exciting like setting it up as a set now mm-hmm. having guests and having just a place of our own is something yeah. that we didn't even think of two years ago yeah. that was happening yeah and I think also like while the studio is great and we have audio people that kind of handle things and that's the benefit right you just mm-hmm. show up sit down and don't worry about anything else there's still really like Liana really dealt with a lot of that where there were things that were not in her control waiting for files to be transferred and just the inflexibility of not having access to the studio when we wanted it yeah um and I think that's also for me extremely exciting as well it's like we have our own it's set up we've figured out all the tech stuff and now the trade-off of okay we have to do this on our own versus somebody else handling it well the the benefits are now outweighing the trade-offs right like so and having the ability to just record anytime we want to um has been great yeah and we use that for other things as well you know i used to that for training recordings and courses and things like that so i would agree with you i think that you know for the benefit of people listening is we didn't think about that starting we're gonna be like okay we're gonna get to the point we're gonna have our own studio and it absolutely isn't necessary but for us it became the point where as we grew it's like okay now it's time to kind of have a little more autonomy have a little more control and that's where we are so that's why we did it yeah i agree i think that was a good decision and you know, the little bumps along the way of getting it where we want it um, in terms of the way it looks and, you know, some sound issues and things like that. I know we'll get there as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So, so those are some of the significant, you know, milestones in the journey, just how we've progressed. Um, We asked some of our loyal listeners about what they wanted to know. And here's a question that we're going to answer now regarding to this is um, they asked, what has been your favorite episode or moment so far? And why does it stand out to you? So what do you think, Liana? Liana is the behind the scenes. So she not only looks at all the raw videos, she produces and creates the final cuts that go out um, and get published. So she sees all of the raw footage, the editing, you know, how things flow, makes it look great and perfect. So what do you think was the fa- your favorite episode? So I think one of my favorite episodes is probably our very first video episode, which is our One Tough Chick with Stacey Ured. Um, I think that's one of my favorites just because that was such a pivotal moment in our podcast journey because it was our first guest episode and recording in the studio and being able to produce that um so not it was very that whole journey to leading up to producing that one episode was just exciting and then seeing being there for the episode recording and then seeing all the raw footage getting like cut up and then just the final product of it I think was just something that is probably my favorite because it's yeah, that, was, that was a pivotal moment. And I would agree looking back, it's so hard to choose because yeah, there's yeah. so many great episodes, but I would agree with you that that's the favorite episode and moment because that kind of marked. I think we did one solo episode in the yeah. studio prior to that, but it was really the guest one because not only was it the producing of that and the change in that, but it was the get having a guest, being in the studio, it marked a lot of significant milestones for the in the in the journey. Yeah, agree. I would agree. That's probably my favorite as well. Yeah, yeah. And the one tough chick launching that one tough chick series. Those of you who listen, some really exciting ones coming up. But the one tough chick series really highlighting, you know, uh, inspiring women, whether they're entrepreneurs, it started out entrepreneurs, but it's also inspiring uh, journeys, women that have had inspiring journeys. And they share their story very vulnerably. And there's been some beautiful stories that are shared. And hopefully you've all taken in those. But obviously, if you haven't, go back and find them. They're all marked as one tough chick. Um, I would also like to say that that's also the evolution. This, This kind of goes into the evolution. The one tough chick series 
is now the basis of, and the evolution of the podcast is now in, when did we do it? Uh, April, May? Yeah. I think in April. It was Finding the Upside is on a streaming service, Your Home TV, which is a, what's called an OTT, over the top streaming service. It is free to viewers, which is unlike most of the other ones, and it's sponsor supported. And uh, Finding the Upside premiered on there in April. We are available on that streaming service, but that created another, yet another opportunity for us to change the content and really be more creative in how we were bringing stories to viewers and listeners and meaning that because it was TV, instead of just being in the studio, we could go out into the field. We had to think a little bit more like, okay, wait a minute, this is television now. What makes a good television episode? Yeah. And adding other elements to just the, you know, recorded guest interviews. So One Tough Chick is definitely, what's the word? It's go, it's going to be a 2.0, One Tough Chick 2.0. And Finding the Upside 2.0, because there's lots of different content iterations or evolution that you're going to see differently. If you just listen, you're going to still hear an audio episode uh, because everything will translate to an audio episode. Yeah. But on video, there's going to be a lot more exciting production because it's opened up our ability to change how we do the content and be creative and yep. produce and bring that to, to that service. So that's yet again, another evolution. And I would say that the one tough chick is really going to transform in that new arena yeah. Uh, because we're really focused on making it better, bringing more behind the scenes of somebody's journey yeah. and really talking about and showing that to you as the viewers and listeners. Yeah. So I would like to ask you, Liana, because, you know, we're always wanting to know what impact this has had. And obviously everybody who has listened and our loyal supporters have definitely shared with us, oh my God, that was a great episode. Or, you know, people will share that with me and send me messages or, you know, people will say, oh, I've been listening to your podcast and blah, blah, blah. And I think we had an event, which is going to be some other episodes that have been releasing, but some other episodes that'll be coming up that'll show a little more of the event uh, that you can get a visual on and see what the experience was about. But at that event, we recorded a few episodes live and we got a lot of feedback, even from some of the people who are involved in the event. Can you share, I, I think Gina shared something with you at, at uh, dinner and what she said about listening to the podcast and the impact that it's had for her. Yeah, she, she told us, I mean, we went to dinner um, she was one of our featured speakers at the event, and it was just nice because she was like, oh, yeah, I listened to that one episode. We were talking about some topic, and, like, one of our topics that you had just, and she's like, yeah, I was listening to that one episode, and you took, to it was great, that topic, and it plays such a huge role into, like, what I'm speaking about and, like, what we're talking about right now, and she's like, it's, she's like, I listen to the podcast all the time, and just to hear that mm -hmm. um someone who listens and to know that all of you know your hard work and then just knowing that like the editing the behind the scenes all that yeah. hard work and then people are listening to it and taking it all in and you know using it for you know the good like using it for their own good and for conver their own conversations and mm -hmm. just bringing it up I think that was so nice to hear and how it's actually like impacting our audience like the podcast I that that was something that I was super excited to hear about. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I remember you, when you told me about it and, you know, hearing that myself too, when somebody's like, you talked about that on the podcast and that like, they make the connection to something in their life, or yeah. something that there was a takeaway. I've gotten some messages that are like, oh my gosh, I just listened to your podcast on whatever topic it was. And that's so, that's resonating so much with me right now. And like, we love hearing that. So any way that you want to tell us that, whether it's a comment on our social media posts about an episode, or you want to send us a message, yeah. a DM, if you want to, on the podcast platform, we all, all the podcast platforms, 
have a Q&A feature. You could also just leave a review. There's many ways to give us feedback and we love hearing that. Yep. So please, thank you for your support and please keep keep that coming. Yeah. Um, that helps us know that we're having the impact that we intend uh, with this podcast and, and that it's coming into all your lives. Yeah. And I also think like another point to bring up is that when we hear this feedback, I think it kind of puts us as like, a, okay, we're doing something that like people are actually engaging with. And then we also feel like, I feel like topics we talk about are like, I know we see it a lot. Like we'll see it a lot. Some of the topics that we talk about here, but we sometimes are like, it's, it's nice to know that there's other people dealing with it too. And that it's nice to hear that, like it's there, we're helping them like by them listening to it. Cause we're not just dealing with it ourselves. Yeah. And you know, that's the intention from the beginning for me. And I, that's, that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about is that my intention is to talk about things. Obviously, you know, it's, it's in our intro, right? It's business. Yes. Business. I talk about business, but I talk about life. I talk about mindset. I talk about things that are also that are being talked about or that are, or people are struggling with right now, or that are hot topics. You know, a lot of things with women relative to, balancing career or job or business and home life, yeah. right? Um, also just any challenge in personal growth, you know, yeah. personal growth is a journey and it's something that doesn't start and end in one phase of your life. Yeah. You know, I yeah. believe that. And I want to be able to bring topics and discussions to the forefront. Yes. As you just said, Liana, to help people feel like it's not just me oh she or they because our guests that come on also that's a big part of it is this is what they went through and bringing those stories through storytelling and through sharing those that different life experience and different moments even in the shorty episodes i do it's usually something that i'm either struggling with or going through in that moment and sharing that or sometimes celebrating in that moment, you know, a triumph to share that is the intention is to help bring that and shine a light on those things that I care about that I know others need the messages for and just to do that and to have the impact. So, um, yeah, I agree. I, I think that's one of the things that, uh, is most gratifying and also, the purpose, you know, the intention and the purpose from the get go that continues through this. Yeah, agreed. I think also in answering, you know, one of the questions we got was what's the biggest lessons you've learned from hosting? And I'm going to ask Liana one of the other questions because she's the behind the scenes in production and all of that, but hosting, you know, one of the things that I've, the biggest lesson I've learned is that it's relative to the point that I just made. You know, we all, I think we all have this experience where there's stuff that's rattling around in our head, right? And being able to share those things is oh, something that is so impactful, not only because it helps me work it out, right? Like, let's say it's something I'm thinking about or something that I've been working on or it's something that I learned. You know, um, sometimes it's something that I learned in the moment. Sometimes it's stuff that I've learned over the years yeah. that I've evolved and that I share. You know, that I think is understanding that that is not just a way to connect with people, but it also helps me reflect back on my own lessons, my own connections. And it elevates it to be able to share it with others that then they may have the same takeaway. And the only thing I can think of is like, there's, and I think I brought this up in one of the last episodes that was filmed at the event. It's like, you never really know what's going to, what, what is going to resonate and what's going to help people. And I think um, it was Lynn Monroe Miranda that I said, who wrote a book, which was, it's called Good Morning, Good Night. And it yeah. originally what it was was just his tweets in the morning that he would get up and just write something and he would tweet it. Now it's X, but you know, Twitter yeah. on Twitter in those days. And 
then at the end of the day, he would, you know, do it, do it again. And really, he was talking to himself. It was what he needed in that moment on that day. Yeah. And somebody said to him, oh, my God, this should be a book. And he shared that. And I feel exactly the same about what I've learned in hosting this is me being able to bring these topics through myself, through guests that come on, through these discussions that we create a forum for. And then it help other people have an impact on other people. Like that's kind of blows my mind a little bit because I never really thought that it would have that much of an impact, if any. And I think that was my hesitation, if I'm being completely honest, about when you and Emma said do a podcast, I was like, really? Like, who's going to listen to me? You know? I didn't really understand the whole potential in that. And I've also learned that by speaking things out, it helps to process it for myself, right? And all the things that I care about and I talk about, that I talk about in my trainings, that I talk about when I speak. Yeah this is part of the creative process is speaking it out and talking about it on the podcast. It all feeds into what I write, what I train on, what I speak about, all those things. So that was, that was a surprise for me. I didn't realize how in like interconnected yeah. this activity would be with everything else that I do. So, yeah. So Liana, why don't you, we have a question here. We, this is, you know, we wanted to give some behind the scenes insights and we've definitely faced some challenges yeah. in producing, um, but we got this question. Can you give us a glimpse into what a typical episode production process looks like for you? So you can answer that question, but you can also elaborate and say, uh, you know, what some of the specific challenges might've been that you face specifically yes so i think we've kind of gotten our process uh down so mm -hmm. our process right now is we schedule those recordings you know you will sp spend some time with the de uh, guest figuring out a time we get recorded whether it's in the field in the, in the studio you know all the different options that we have and then yeah. from there i grab those files from you and i just start editing um we use adobe premiere pro which uh we found is our saving grace we love it we have everything kind of systemized or uh, when it comes to our assets and our little thumbnails and logo and everything so everything just plops right in and i think when it comes to some challenges in a not in adobe but just facing when editing is that we have tried to get it so that it is as easy as possible to produce. And I think like writing everything down and having those detailed little moments of we have it so like it's in the set, we're like, okay, we know that these edits need to be cut. And I think it's something that me and Maria just know that like it won't be in it. So say things like ums, us, little pauses, like those are all, get all cut and like you won't see that in our podcast because uh, they're all edited out. Thank yeah, you do a great job of cleaning it up. That's for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Stuff like that. I think it was challenging to just be so detailed about it. Um, I think that's something that's grown, but now I feel like we are pretty set in what we know goes into it, what we know is, come, is produced and what we know comes out of it. So I think that was probably the biggest challenge was just like solidifying all of that. Yeah, um, And just getting to know what we really want. And we're also very, like, we also evolve a lot. I'm not going to say that's a huge challenge, but it is a challenge that we love to evolve because evolving leads to challenges because there's always something new when it comes to evolving. And it's trying something new and the frustrations that come with trying something new and the challenges or setbacks that come with trying something new. But I think the the production and the involvement of production, um, there will always be challenges and I'm just, I'm still pretty excited about it. Yeah, I would agree. And I mean, listen, that's kind of our style here, right? Is we, you know, a status quo is not a word in my vocabulary and that's not how this, anybody on my team who works on my team has to be comfortable with that, right? Because yeah. 
and and really that's just the way it is in the world now if you if you stand still there are people are going to be pass you by right if yeah. you don't grow people are going to be growing beyond you yeah and it's not just a competitive thing it's just in the sense of always evolving continuously improving trying new things and yes those comes with challenges but in terms of just also i wanted to say this as you were speaking any process and you know that's like a lot of my background right it yeah. doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't come out of the gate being perfect it's attention to detail it's paying attention to what we learned applying those lessons learned and continuing to improve that over and over and over again and that's the only way that you grow in anything yeah. so i would agree that you know sometimes we want to try something new it's like uh oh we're shaking it up again but i think we've also taken all the lessons learned and that helps us evolve and do a 2.0 and a 3.0 and a next version much more much easier each time we evolve to the next level yeah and you know i appreciate that and that's part of the thing i think that's so exciting is that we're never done no you know, you're which is great yeah i agree so we got this question and I spoke about this a little bit, but we're going to share a little more detail. What exciting plans or new directions do you have in mind for the next hundred episodes? So as I said, our new initiative of having the podcast up on your home TV, being a channel partner there and growing that channel, not only growing the reach of that channel, because it is a global network. We've done pretty well for the first five episodes that are up there. And we have another batch that'll be released soon. At some point, we will get to the point where when podcasts get released on YouTube and on Apple, on Spotify and all the podcast platforms, it will also be in sync with when the episode goes up, goes up on your home TV. But we're in the ramp up stage right now. But because of that, as I spoke about, it's been very exciting for us to just be able to be more creative think like producers, think about different ideas of how to capture stories. I did one of the very first episodes that'll premiere our next season. After this episode airs, we'll be taking a break for a couple of weeks before we premiere our next season, Yeah, uh, which will be what, the fourth season? Yeah, it'll be season four. Wow, season four. The beginning of season four will launch with our very first Finding the Upside that we did in the field. I traveled to Tennessee and I interviewed and highlighted a friend of mine, which definitely look forward to that because it's the first, first one that you get to see me in the field doing an interview, but yes, actually showing you uh, what she's about, what she does. And I don't want to give too much away, but definitely sneak peeking that one yeah. <laughs> um, but there'll be many more like that and we are definitely in a mode of creative development now so as liana talked about kind of you know how we get together and you know get to final production prior to that pre-production there's planning there's scheduling there's content episode development there's ideas there's obviously contacting guests there's guests that come to us there's guests that we reach out to and then talking about having some discussion about what do we want to focus this topic on or what does this guest bring to the table? What is the highlight of the topic? It's with a whole new world that's open to us now because it's not just sit down interview. It's how could we capture this story and really bring this person's either journey either what they do to bring that to all of you. So meaning not just having somebody talk about what they do, actually showing you what they do. So really excited for that. There'll yeah. be much more of that coming in the next hundred episodes. And we'll still do our traditional shorty episodes that I do that are sometimes audio only. We'll do in studio interviews, just traditional ones uh, if it fits, but we're really excited about expanding that and also highlighting a little bit more our own events. So we did a event in June, Revive and Thrive. You've seen some of the episodes that were recorded there. 
but we actually held this event that is now going to be an annual event and we'll be bringing you also highlights of that as well as live coverage of that. So a lot of exciting things that are happening. What we also have started to talk about is perhaps all the different places that I go, uh, as long as I get permission, bringing that to you. So whether that's conferences or experiences and having really just uh, sharing a behind the scenes of all those things that I am experiencing and bringing that to you, whether that's conferences, going to see different speakers, different things like that. So beyond social media, which I try to share that, just bringing that in terms of episodes that you can watch and bring an element of that and highlight that for you. Liana, anything else that you want to share about what we have planned coming up? I think in terms of my role, just, you know, better just better editing, more intriguing episodes for everyone. I know there's some new edits that we've been looking at that we want to include. And um, with the guests, you know, the new version of being in the field with these, with our expected and upcoming guests, I think this is going to turn into some great production and have that like TV like podcast feel, which I think is super exciting since now we're going, we are on YH TV. So I think that's, you hit on everything, getting all of our, we have a lot of exciting guests coming up, but I also think we have a lot of exciting, like you mentioned, events coming up mm-hmm. that I feel like we're going to play a huge role in this podcast and just be super exciting for listeners um, and watchers now because we, yes. <laughs> to just, experience so i'm excited to get everyone get these next 100 episodes out there for everyone yeah i am too well i also wanted to first off thank all of you whether you've been listening from the beginning watching from the beginning or joined us along the way thank you so much for all of your support i'm encouraging you to participate in shaping our future episodes by leaving us feedback leaving us reviews on those Q and A on those platforms or DMing us on any of the social platforms. We love that. Uh, we'd love to hear from you and also just incorporate anything you're looking to see more of what you want to see, but for sure we would not be where we are, not only for our internal team the efforts of Liana and everybody else on the team, Alan, all our interns, Aiden, all the people along the way that have helped, but, you the listeners and viewers we can't continue to do this without you so please share it with others we want to expand our reach uh, to more people who would enjoy it or benefit from it Uh, but we look forward to bringing you so much more and look out for our premiere episode of our fourth season at our one tough chick where i went in the field with natalie focal please look forward to that And we look forward to seeing you in our next season. Let's say goodbye, Liana. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thank you.